Hey guys, Matt here. On today's episode, we are going to visit Freedom Machine Group here in Valley City, North Dakota. Let's get going. Hey Travis, what's up? Good morning, buddy. How are you? Good. Good to see you. See you. Thanks so much for having me. Glad you made the trip. Yeah. So Travis, you guys, he is one of the part owners and running the Freedom Machine Group shop here in Valley City, North Dakota, and he agreed to give me a tour here of what he does on a day in and day out basis. Well, we're going to show you some cool things. They got machines running right now with some of our parts, and then we're also going to show you some examples of parts that they've already run and you're going to get to see what their capabilities are. All right, should we get after it? Yeah, absolutely. What would you like to see first? Like, let's go out and see some machines? Yeah, let's go see some machines. All right, let's see what they're doing. This is a part that Travis makes, Freedom Machine Group makes, and uh, that we have on our website and offer to the farmers all around the region, all around the world, and uh, made right here in Valley City, North Dakota. Pretty sweet. Let's take a look at the different steps it takes to make this part. So once I, once I get the order from uh, Red E, I order the blanks. The blanks come in the flame cut, one inch grade 50 plate. It's got the basic shape of that part to it. Once he gets it loaded up, these are all torqued to spec. He closes the door and he sets the machine and tells it it's ready to go. Wow, did you guys see how many parts he can fit in there at one time? That is incredible. Inside the machine is an uh, identical tombstone to what was out there. The neat thing about these machines is it allows the machine to work on this tombstone while that one's out there being switched out. So rather than having a door open to load parts and the machine not running, this thing all day long just cycles it in and out. You want to see a big cutter go in and start making some noise? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Do you guys want to see a part getting machine? I'd say let's go for it. Let's see if we can peek in there a little bit. First thing it's gonna do is it's gonna bring in a big three quarter inch end mill. And that's what sucks the relief on the face of the top edge of the part where the stud mill. So you can see it's spinning up there. This thing really likes to throw chips. Let's see what happens on the first go here. I know they're gonna come up backwards on this one. So here's, here's an example of the part that's being machined and what's being machined, right? It's uh, machining this part right here, correct? It's cutting that relief out, yes. Uh, and then, uh, is it gonna come in and do this groove too pretty soon? Uh, that's the very final step. Okay. Um, and yeah, it, we actually use what looks like a big saw blade and we'll show you guys that. Um, the rest of the drilling part and whatnot uses fluid, so it's, it's pretty hard to see, but um, when we get to the slot cutter, uh, that doesn't run coolant again, so we'll be able to watch that cool and see what it's actually doing. Oh, cool. All right, so we made it through the end mill. You can see all these reliefs are cut. Okay, so the next thing is going to come in, it's going to do a spot drill, and it's going to go through now and, and drill all the positions for the stud hole. It's going to drill for the cross bolt for where it mounts onto the shaft and clamps it down. So I'll just kind of let it go. Uh, we'll just kind of peek in through the window, see what we can see, uh, and I'll just kind of let it go through all its drilling until we get to the slot cutting part. Pretty hard to see in there, guys. Sorry. It's like being in a car wash. So these are the studs we make. These come out of the bar feed machines. Uh, we knurl them, thread them, get them turned to size. Uh, really a pretty simple process, pretty simple setup. All right, so it's just a simple air over hydraulic press. That's it. 
So once that step of it's completed, using different tools in here to maintain the quality of the parts. And so the operator will then measure and verify that the, the length of the stud sticking out of the part is within tolerance. So you can see right here, 3.188 plus or minus 30 thousandths. And we're right within 20 thousandths of that. So, And this is a really important step, you guys. We've had issues in the past with these studs not getting pressed in all the way, um, not a good press fit. And these are things that we're gonna keep you the customer from experiencing any issues, they're gonna catch it, they're gonna scrap those parts or rework them so that the finished part is always spot on or bang on, as our Canadian customers would say. The big feller came out. Oh, 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 oh. See you later, guys. Oh. All right, just getting into position. don't want to get your hand in there It'll, you'll lose something or, or get sucked in wow well, just uh, the heat of the chips and you know a lot of the older manual machines they never had any surrounds on them and things like that you guys it'd be pretty good and tough to run them things because the yeah. chips get in certain places but yeah. uh, for the safety of it uh, on a normal day-to-day -day operation uh, it's set up so that if that door comes open it's stopped yeah, so right now there's, a, there's safety features in place because these machines will not stop yeah. they go through steel like that you are you're not the butt bag them off so yeah Are you bored yet? I hope not, because I'm not. This is so exciting. Let's go check out another part that we're running here at Freedom Machine Group. It's a little quieter back here. All right, here we have a vertical milling machine. Let's see what part they're running in here. So this little part here is actually gonna end up being a gusset uh, for some framework uh, for an airplane. 
it's part of a cargo system on an airplane. It's not part of the structure. It's it's something they use for securing cargo or mm -hmm. cabinetry or things like that inside the aircraft. But it starts out looking like a like a little ramp for your Hot Wheel car. Oh, cool. um, this started out yesterday as just a just a square block of aluminum. And we mill it down to this in the first step. Everything in machining is about repeatability. So being able to locate the part the exact same place each time mm -hmm. gets your results and keeps you in tolerance. So these particular jaws here are special made. They only hold on to about 60 thousandths of material, but they got little biters in here that really grip this part. So I can put a lot of tool pressure on it and it's not gonna move on us. Just like the other one that started, we're starting off with an end mill, just a little smaller variety. And it's gonna come down. It's gonna try and give us a cooling bath here. Woo! I almost got sprayed there. I'll just let you That's see. okay, I didn't have a bath yet, so I probably needed it. So this just kind of shows you some of the tool paths these things do that for maximum efficiency. Right now it's doing kind of a roughing path to open up that area inside of there. So it goes down a little ways, cuts in, opens it up. This uh, this seems like you just load a part and push a button. How hard can it be, right? Yeah, it's good, just right? fits out parts, and then it's easy peasy. I tell you, if you get to the point where you can read what's going on on this screen. Um, <laughs> then there's pretty much nothing to it, but yeah. this is the actual program that the machine is running on and uh, tells it what to do. So I don't know if you remember your uh, Cartesian coordinate graphs from school, but that's basically how these machines work. That's a lot of numbers and uh, a lot going on that definitely you need some training on, so it's not as easy as just pushing buttons, but when it's all set up, it's certainly a very repeatable and very efficient way to make parts. So here's something you might get a kick out of. I don't know if you ever remember this thing or not. Oh, this is the machine that was sitting in storage that Reddy bought many years ago, like 10 years ago. Yeah. And uh, you know what? We bought it from NDSU, North Dakota State University. It was in their IME machining lab. And uh, this was actually in place when I went to school. In fact, I actually got to see this run. It made a part for the Formula SAE car um, when I was a part of SAE in school. And we did some collegiate design series competitions. Anyway, we weren't using it. We weren't starting a machine shop anytime soon. And so Travis, when Travis Bruce and I got together and started Freedom Machine Group, we're like, hey, we got a machining center ready to go. And does it work? It works. All right. It works. We went to Fargo, we picked it up, we put her back together. We've done a little upgrade to it. It's got a new screen on it. Oh, hey, that is new. Much well, better. So here's a, here's an old ready machine making ready parts. Awesome, awesome. This here is actually right now that final step of the depth arm. Uh, we're putting that hole in for doing the cross hole pinning. Make sure that that pin never comes out. So and we're just taking that depth arm, send it in here. This one's really pretty simple. Lock it in place. Cool. I'm yeah, I'm excited. Mate. I'm grinning. You can tell I'm grinning because that that machine was sitting in storage. It wasn't getting used, and now it's getting used, and it's making our parts. Great combo there. Great great success story. All right, let's see what other parts they're making in the shop here. All right, I am very familiar with this casting, you guys. This is a part that uh, we source for another company, and uh, these are hubs. These are hubs that go on closing wheels for planters, for air seeders. And uh, it starts with a raw casting. And then these guys get it and they machine it down into a shape that's useful. All right, I want to also introduce you guys to Bruce. I Bruce, that. Bruce is one of the guys here that's running the shop and part owner of the shop. A key player, a key guy here. And uh, he does a lot of setup with the machines and also coordinates the workers out here. So let's go see what part he's working on and see what he's doing. 
Well, we're working on the same part that Matt just mentioned to you just a little bit ago. So, all right. We have the first operation going on this part, facing and turning to one side, putting a bearing bore, dust cap bore, and a snap ring groove. All right. And then it looks like this is the side that the bearing there. goes in. So it's gonna drop in a little bit just to get it started when we go to press this thing in once this part is painted and ready for, for uh, sale. Um, then it's gonna get pressed in, then a snap ring goes in there and a dust cap, just like Bruce said. But before that can happen, there's a lot of machining that has to happen. It starts out like this. All right, goes like this. Then we have five tools to machine that part. A turn tool, two drills, a boring bar and a snap ring groove tool. Oh wow, and they're all loaded into here, it looks they're like. all loaded up in the turret. One, two, three, four, and then there's a five, five one down there. And this bearing bore, of course, is a total tolerance of six ten thousandths of an inch. And what is and that in decimal form? Point zero, point zero, 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 six. six. Three zeros and a, six. and a six. Wow, that is very tight tolerance. Oh, it's crazy. So the program's already set. Yep, it's a minute and 53 seconds to machine that part. Okay. What do you do for a minute and 53 seconds? Uh, I, we always go through the measurements. Okay. Whenever you're making parts, measurements is always critical. And that's with that bearing bore, having that tight of a tolerance, we measure every part. And we have specialized gauges that will measure to those 10 thousandths of an inch. Yeah. So we're getting a measurement of 1.5744, which is within the tolerance of the part. All right. That's a successfully made part right there. Oh, wow. So we have six gauges there just for the measurements on this part. Oh, wow. So, and they all have a different shape, I see. Like this one must measure an inside. This one measures the diameter of the snap ring groove. Okay. This one will measure the depth of the snap ring groove to the bottom of the bore. Okay. This one is also a depth mic. And there we can measure the length of that turn diameter. Oh. And this one measures another tight tolerance. This one is, uh, we have a lot of tolerance on this. This is only a plus or minus 1,000. Okay, so okay. Plenty of room for that one. And finally, just a regular caliper for measuring diameters. And the length of the part. Okay. So there are 20 measurements on this part for this operation. Wow. 20. And how many times do you check? Do you check 20 measurements every part, or do you do it every so many parts? Well, depending on the tolerance of the part, like this with the plus minus three ten thousandths, we check every part on that one. Okay. The other measurements we'll check probably every uh, five to ten parts. Okay. Then we record it on our. Uh, control plans every three times a day. Okay. Wow. So not only good process in place, but they actually document it too, so they can go back and see what did we actually document as those numbers if there ever is an issue. So now this part is done. Oh, look at that beauty. off the part. Chips out of the jaws, it's ready for another part. All right, you want to throw it in and we'll... And then we do it all over again. We do it all over again. Wow, you guys, that is so cool. Talk about a complicated part. I had no idea that so many things go into uh, measuring a part, but you know what? Freedom Machine Group here, it's the place to be. If you need production parts, make sure you give them a shout. Um, we're gonna go back in the office and check in or check out with these guys and say thank you, so let's head that way. Well, it has been a real treat to be here at Freedom Machine Group in Valley City, North Dakota. This is a great shop. These guys really care about what they're doing and they really know what they're doing. Make sure you look it up. Hey, thanks so much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this as much as I do. We're out of here. <laughs>